I am gonna pop on here and do a quick little video on how to prep a guitar. This, because tomorrow is the class that I'm helping teach for the kids that got guitars and they're gonna be learning to play and then um, design their own guitar. And the other reason I wanted to do this video is to show my Rubik's Cube necklace and earrings that one of my really good friends just sent me. <laughs> That's the real reason. Okay, so anyway, you get your guitar. This is actually one. You can buy these uh, online. I think they were $50 or $60. And they came, I mean, they're just, you know, it's a cheap guitar, but look how pretty it is. And, you know, it came with a case and it came with a pick. And so it's a pretty good project guitar. And this one is actually going to be for charity. I'm doing um, a donation to the Camp Circle Star annual mouse race event at Bush Stadium on April 2nd. So I'm gonna try and get this one done and then the one that I got last week also I'm kind of doing two at the same time. But I gotta get started on this one. So anyway, guitar, you start with the guitar. And then like I said last week, you need to get a stack of paper, a newspaper, whatever you want to cover the sides here. And then any place that you don't want, um, don't want to get paint. And actually this one still has its strings on, so I'm gonna have to kinda work around that. Usually the very first thing I do is stuff this hole with some kind of paper or grocery sacks or something, but I can do that later. I can go ahead and show you how I'm gonna prep the sides, okay? So you just take, I got a desk today, a counter. <laughs> and so you, I, I just go ahead and get the tape started, painter's tape, you can use whatever width you want and I love painter's tape. I've actually painted this entire house and so I'm very familiar with how to use this and it just comes off really nice. It doesn't mess up any kind of a finish on anything. So, you just get your tape. The bad part is it does stick together. <laughs> okay, so you can see, I'm just gonna start lining it. Right to the edge so that it goes around to the back too, because we're gonna tape it underneath the back. And then just get one piece of tape down there so that you can get it secure, and then you can go back and, and tape the rest of it on. And I'll probably cut out on this because this isn't that interesting. But, but it's important to get it right to the line of where you're gonna paint on the guitar so that whatever you don't want to have primer or paint touch, you wanna have paint right to that edge. like that. Okay, now that I pretended to be something I wasn't up there, <laughs> I thought I'd come down here on the ground and show you how I really do this. <laughs> and that was just so much easier down here where you have a, a really stable and unwobbly um, surface to work on. And so it's just easier. I just hided the other two guitars too. I was just trying to be something a little more proper up there standing up. But it's, it, however, is easiest for you just so that you can uh, make sure that nothing's wobbling around and, and that you can get a really straight line because it's really important to do a lot of prep work. This has taken about 25 minutes so far to get all this done. Because if you don't do it on this end, you're gonna be doing it on, the, on the, the tail end whenever you should be done with your guitar, like cleaning up little places where your paint has seeped in. If you don't get it straight or you're gonna to have to go back and touch up the side or the front and, and just the back and forth drives me nuts. I did one guitar like that where I didn't, it was a guitar for me, the Dolly Parton one. So I didn't do all this prep work thinking it's just for me. But I ended up, it, that one took me twice as long as the Beatles guitar that I did all this prep work on. And it, it just goes a lot smoother. And so just take some time to get this done right and make sure that you have really straight lines with your tape so that no paint can seep in on surfaces that you don't want to have paint or primer on. And so just wrap it up. I just, you know, make sure that it's kind of flat in back so it's easier to handle. And when you're painting, you've got not a bunch of bulk and, and loose papers. Just make sure it's all picked up nicely and then at the end, you get to reveal it and open it up. So anyway, get on the ground, it's a lot easier. Okay, I'm taking the strings off of this one because this one was one of the new ones I was telling you about that we ordered off of Facebook Marketplace and it still had the strings on it. If I'm gonna be painting one for a commissioned piece, I ask that you take the strings off. <laughs> but since you got this one from Marketplace, so I took all the other strings off and I'm going to show you in case you, like me, didn't know how to do this. 
This is called a guitar winder, guitar string winder. And I know that because I asked. <laughs> I know nothing about guitars. I am learning as I go. So on this little handy dandy little cranky thing, you have to go whichever way it's getting loose because common sense. So it's getting loose and then it just pops out of there. So, and then you're gonna have to, down at the bottom, also loosen this. And so I have another really high, high, um, high tech tool that I use to get the bottom of the string off. Can you even see that? And it's called a pot roast fork. <laughs> you can find one in your silverware drawer. And so you just have to be real careful, kind of pop it up so that you don't scratch this unless you're unless you want to paint it, and then you don't have to really worry about it. But you might as well not scratch it anyway. And take the pegs out. I don't know if that's what they're called. And the strings. And so you're going to discard these strings because, from what I understand, you just you can't restring these. And you make a mobile or something for your backyard. And then you can either put these back in, which I'm going to, again, I'm not going to paint this. So you just plunk the little pegs back in. And then at the very end, after it's all painted and ready and sealed and shellacked and whatever you're gonna do to seal yours, then you have someone more skilled than me put the strings back on. So there we go. Now I can go ahead and tape this up because I couldn't with the strings on it and I'm going to tape this up as well. I wanted to point out that it's kind of important when you're taping this up, make sure that you get really crisp lines. Like I use my fingernail because you're going to want to really protect that and also, you know, get a really clean line whenever you're painting all around it. The Beatles one was important because I had color that went right up. Stripes, which is, let's see if you can see that. Let's see the stripes that went right up to the edge. So I just use my fingernail and really get it flat, like right to, and if you're gonna paint it again, you don't have to worry about any of this. And you'll get paint on that. And so what happened to mine, like you're gonna get paint on that. When you peel it up, sometimes it'll peel up a little bit. That's not a big deal. You're just gonna go back and touch it up later. And so for this part, I, and just taking old <laughs> tax papers, <laughs> what, what they're good for. And I'm gonna just wrap this and tape it and then I'm gonna use the same painter's tape and just tape this part down into there and then stuff that and then we'll be kind of ready for primer. Okay, now that we're back, um, now that we're done I should say, with the taping up and ready to do the primer, I'm standing up again, <laughs> up off the ground. And so this is how, I taped it up very crinkly, kind of left the back open. It's not going to get spray on the back. I mean, you're not going to but tape up as much as you can. Oh, I still have to do that. I'm going to stuff that with paper too. Um, but anyway, I just wanted you to see that it's all taped up and pretty precise. Like I said, get it as close as you can to get really straight lines so that nothing can seep through and you don't have to go back and do as much touch up and, and clean up later. It's just at the end, you just want to be done. <laughs> so there you go. And then we're going to do the primer tomorrow. I don't think it's going to snow tomorrow. So maybe we'll get outside and get some fresh air after the class and get this thing ready to paint.